What impact did the coronavirus pandemic have on the work of patient safety learning? From a patient safety perspective, there was, there was a sense of, well, when people are having to respond to the crisis, what's the role of patient safety in that? And very early on, we were reflecting that actually staff safety is a patient safety issue. And this was reflected in World Patient Safety Day last year, that patient safety and staff safety are really two sides of the same coin. We need to stop thinking them as entirely separate things. So we started thinking differently in that way. In our uh, major policy report called the Blueprint for Action that we've outlined our thinking and its summary research from the last 15 to 20 years, we were trying to answer the question, if we know what we know now compared to 20 years ago, and we are, the system is responding by taking more action, why have we still got the same level of harm? Why is harm so persistent? So we built on the knowledge in that blueprint for action. And one of the, um, one of the initiatives in there that we called for was the development of patient safety standards for organizations. So if you look at an organization, an NHS trust, they will have to have a fire safety strategy, which basically they have a policy framework, they have a very clear expectation of what, what uh, good looks like. You would have people with expertise that would then deliver that and that there would be a performance monitoring and review to make sure that the, the, the policy had been implemented in an effective way. You don't have to have any of that for patient safety. There isn't that framework. And so we were influencing at the very, before the pandemic with organizations at NHS England, with CQC, with others saying, well, we, surely we should have a patient safety standards framework where organizations know what good looks like, they can assess themselves against it, and then they can decide how they're prioritizing their patient safety journey, what more they need to do, whether it's on organizational culture, whether it's on instant, instant reporting and investigation, whether it's for leadership and governance, whether it's around data, whole series of activities. I also want to uh, enable your listeners uh, to pick up on something that the World Health Organization has recently published. They've published a report on COVID-19 and patient safety. What has it meant for service delivery? What has it meant for people working in patient safety? What is it? What have we learned about system resilience and what more we need to do to protect ourselves in future? And it's an excellent report. It came out only a few weeks ago. Um, and it, uh, I was able to be one of a, a small number of experts that contributed to that. But it's a WHO rapid review on COVID-19 and patient safety, the implications. Uh, and I would encourage people who are interested in this field to, to pick up and, and uh, learn from that. Patient safety learning is now celebrating its two-year anniversary. So my question to you is, what still needs to be done and what aspirations do you have for the organisation? Um, one of the reports that uh, we've recently issued, and again, we'll put the link in, is a, is a report called Mind the Implementation Gap. And this is also reflected by uh, the work of WHO and the Global Patient Safety Action Plan, which is how do we address the, what they call the no-do gap? So we have so much knowledge now about the causal factors of unsafe care. Uh, and we learn from investigations, the inquiries. In the UK, we have Prevent and Future Death Coroner Reports. We have the excellent work that the Healthcare Safety Investigation Branch does. We have a, we have a plethora of insight testimonies from patients and families, from complaints. We know a lot about the causal factors. Let's start applying that knowledge for improvement. Let's take that knowledge and act on it. So we don't want to see more inquiries into maternity care that has failed mothers, families, babies. We want the recommendations from those reports and from those inquiries to be implemented. And one of the things that we did in that report was to say, no one is really monitoring this. There is no oversight body committee that operating as a safety management system here in the UK that is saying, 
Well, actually, there are a few recommendations from the Midstaffs inquiry that we still haven't responded to. We're not, we're not designing it, our system, as a learning system. We're not acting on our insight and then evaluating what works and then sharing that knowledge. So let's turn it into a more effective learning system. That's much more of what we need to do. So part of what our role will be to to try and influence through policy, through working with parliamentarians and accountability fr frameworks, working with national bodies, but also working with organizations on the ground to help them assess what more they need to do and help them put plans in place to deliver that. Mm, a very useful message there. And my last question is, do you have a message as Chief Executive of Patient Safety Learning, a message for healthcare professionals. Um, and I think the message is that really, we should be providing healthcare professionals with the environment that enable them to do their job safely and to provide safe care for their patients and families. And we're not doing that as well as we ought to. We know from the scale of avoidable harm, more needs to be done. So I think, I think it's almost a, a recognition that we need to transform ourselves to be able to provide people with the environment to do the right thing more readily. So yes, we can learn from when things go wrong, but there are lots of examples of where people are doing rather well. We need to share that and, and to implement that. So I would say anyone that is very committed and interested in patient safety, which frankly is every healthcare professional. That's why people go into <laughs> to, to, to do the professional jobs they do. It's understanding how they can contribute to that by sharing their experience. If they feel they're in an environment that would be supportive of them, to, to raise their concerns, to suggest improvement, to create networks, to work with colleagues. The most effective way of improving safety is to work as an effective multidisciplinary team. There is no doubt about it. So, the, so even if you don't have a, a degree in human factors and ergonomics, if you haven't been formally trained, there are ways of safe practice by being a safe practitioner and uh, inviting people to get more inspired by the knowledge that we can provide through the hub and some of the networks to help support organizations make the change that they need to. So that would be a message, I think, maybe two messages. Helen Hughes, thank you very much for sharing your insights and experience with us today. That really has been terrifically interesting. For more information about Helen Hughes' work and the work of patient safety learning, please visit our website using the link in the description and be sure to sign up for more news, videos and journals. For updates straight to your inbox, please follow the link below.